Great. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for this third and last applicant support workshop for the Young Innovators Award. We're really happy to have you here. And if you've come to the previous sessions, you'll know that these are really informal. Um, so it's all about uh, hearing from you and listening to all of your questions and doing the best that we can to help you with your application. So if you'd like to start and put in the chat your name and where you're joining, joining us from today, that would be amazing so we can get the conversation going. Um, today is a, a specific topic of the application. We're going to be focusing on the video pitch. The video pitch is really, really important part of your application because essentially you have three minutes to condense everything that you're about, that you're doing, you, your business, how you're going to give back to the community, all of these different things in three minutes. So we're gonna be breaking it down. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce three uh, young innovators who have been successful in the past with the competition. And we're gonna actually watch their video to see as an example. And then we're gonna hear from them in terms of how they approached it and what they did. And, and uh, you'll see they're very different, very unique videos. So then we'll finish with some tips at the end as well. If you need, the closed captions are enabled, so you can just click on uh, that at the bottom of your screen. Um, and yes, if you have any questions, um, do feel free to pop them into the chat, or you can also raise your hand um, and just unmute and ask any of your questions. If you're comfortable, feel free to have your cameras on so we can see you. Um, but of course, uh, it's totally, um, totally up to you. So let's get started. Um, so question 19, as you would have seen, is a video pitch. And it talks first about the how. And this is really important because if you get this wrong, unfortunately, your video will not be considered. So you have to upload a video to YouTube, not other mediums, just YouTube this year. And it has to be three minutes maximum. What this means is that the assessors, the panels, once it hits three minutes, if it's 305, 310, they won't watch, they will stop the video at three minutes. Um, so unfortunately, they might miss out on some key content that, you know, your powerful close at the end, oh, they will miss it. So you really need to stay within the three minutes. You have to ensure that your video is unlisted in the privacy settings. And if you have a question about how to do that, we've got a link and we'll share the slides with you after this with the recording as well. So you'll be able to see that. And your video has to remain available until the 1st of December. Why? Because it takes a while to assess so many applications. Um, so we need to make sure that the assessors and the panelists are able to view your video. Unfortunately, if they can't view it, like I said, you might be ineligible. Un 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 oh, that's a tough word today. Um, and then also do remember to put the link and any password if you have it password protected, um, which is really important, by the way, if you have a, an idea that might need to be patent or, or trademarked or anything like that in the future. So if you have it with a password and the link, put those two things in the body of the question, the link and the password. Do not forget one. This has happened before. I've had situations where people have said, but I put my video, but there was no password. If we can't view your video, it's like there is no video, unfortunately. Um, if you have any issues with that or any issues with any you know, technical elements uh, around the video, you can email the support team at Innovate UK uh, and they'll be able to, to help you with any of the, the how part. Now, the what. What do you actually put in the three minutes? So the videos must tick all of the different elements that are in the question. And here, we're just going to quickly run through them. And then, like I said, we're going to see a few examples and we're going to kind of break it down and, and learn from them. So just quickly, there's um, different parts that I've kind of split that into. First is you need to talk about you and your idea. And that's those different bullet points that are in the question. Introduce yourself and your business idea explaining how you came up with your idea, explain why you think it's a good idea for business. So that's about you and your business. There's an ele other element that is asked of you is around the problem and the solution. So it's things like, what problem uh, is it that you're trying to solve? Why is your solution better than or different from what already exists in the market? Uh, what are gonna be the benefits uh, to society, to the environment, to the economy? 
and you describe a little bit the work that you've done so far um, in terms of developing your idea. Maybe you have a minimum viable product. Maybe you have a few customers, or maybe you've um, literally just asked, you know, people about your problem, and therefore you've established that there's a problem. Whatever it is that the stage that you're at, this is where you would include that. And then there's that part around more like looking ahead. So it's, it's asking you about, you know, what difference is the award going to make to you personally, uh, where you hope to be in five to 10 years and how you're going to plan on becoming a role model uh, for young innovators. And to be honest, this is a part that's often missed in videos. And it is really important because the Young Innovator Award is different to a lot of InnovHK grants. A lot of InnovHK grants go to businesses, but the Young Innovator Awards go to people, uh, young people like you with brilliant ideas. And so we want to hear, you know, what is the difference that the award is going to make, you know, and how are you going to give back? How are you going to pay forward to the community by um, becoming a young innovator and doing all of this role modeling as well? So this part, do not underestimate the importance of it uh, in terms of when your video will be reviewed. And then finally, it tells you to include any additional information about you or your idea that could help to strengthen your application. So this is just for you to have a think if there's anything else, any must include. What you may find is it's already quite tricky to fit everything else in the three minutes, um, but this is just to open up um, to any extra information. So this is it for me in terms of setting the scene and just giving you an idea. And so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to talk to people who have done it, been there, done that, and learn a lot of lessons from it, um, and they can share their experience. If I may, then let's start with me here. Um, so tell us a little bit about um, a little bit more about you, about your idea, and also how far you've come since this uh, video. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Mihir um, and you have been working on a way to get patients off the ventilator quicker. Um, I won't repeat a lot of what I said. Um, since winning the award in, well, it started in December last year. Uh, the one, I mean, the weekly mentorship has been amazing. I meet with my, I try to meet with my mentor every week and it's a, just a good area to brainstorm and just throw out certain problems I'm facing and get someone else's input. Um, so far I've developed one, one new prototype and I'm currently developing versions two and three of the prototype at the same time, which is really exciting. Um, I've been able to uh, connect with, a, um, with a few universities and partner with them so that I've been, so that I can bring on interns uh, that have been really great. Um, and I'm really fortunate to have them and have them working with me on this and have been faced, have faced some challenges as well. A lot of, um, uh, the, so my initial intellectual property plan and, uh, prototype development actually had to change completely a few months ago because someone else published, uh, a paper with data that was very similar to ours. They didn't copy it. Um, but uh, that has meant I've had to pivot and uh, Innovate UK and my mentor have been very supportive in supporting that pivot. Um, yes, uh, so, so in that sense, it's, uh, this grant has been great in just allowing, uh, you know, allowing us to figure out the way through entrepreneurship and through innovation because it's never a straight and easy point A to point B line. Um, there's usually somehow delta alpha that comes in very random orders uh, before you get to point B. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, um, I've, yeah, that's, uh, and does that answer the question, Solen? Am I missing something? Yes. <laughs> no, that's great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for giving it a, a bit more context. And uh, I remember your video. Uh, I remember, in fact, watching it uh, because I was facilitating the conversation of, of the panel and uh, everyone had a tear in their eye. It was obviously in the middle of uh, the, the COVID crisis. And yeah, yeah it, we, and when you said that part about working free jobs, it just it just touched uh you know everyone on the panel directly so so I, I just wanted everyone in this room to take this away in terms of you know how will you connect 
with people you've never met who they've never met you and in three minutes um, around you as well as your idea. Um, so I think that was a really good example of that. And, and we'll come back to you, me here in terms of more of the content and the technical elements and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but next, we're going to watch Letitia's video. Uh, if, uh, if Jess, if you can play that, that'd be amazing. absolutely adore him. That's me and him. As I was born with one kidney, when I was younger, we always blend random plant-based recipes, oats, chickpeas, whatever we found in the kitchen cupboard. As he always said, one of the biggest indicators of health is our diet, and he wanted me to overcome these symptoms and continue being my best self. As I got older, I realized other people also face small but very annoying health complaints, such as fuzzy brain bloating, and that their diet was quite different from mine in the sense it lacked plants. 25 to 34 year olds have shown an increased interest in plant foods and wanted to make healthier habits. However, many lack time, energy and knowledge to maintain these. Due to this, I became even more health conscious and studied gut health as I realized my purpose in life, which is to enable people to also be their best self through making very nutritious DIY smoothies in the most convenient and revolutionary way. All you do is pop the frozen cubes in your jug, then add water with a cup provided Give it a shake and continue with your everyday activities. Have your shower, make your way to work, then come back in 15 to 20 minutes, give it a quick shake, and it's good to drink. These cubes are made from only organic whole food and contain no preservative, emulsifiers, or additives to give you the best health. So USP will be the first in the UK to offer this blenderless smoothie concept. Two, gut health has become a buzzword in the media, and with new launches, less than 1% feature digestive claim. Mintel reports have shown that it's an untapped opportunity Free. Plus, we have over 50% on brands. In five to 10 years, I want to accomplish three things. One, expand my business and create a logistics model that can deliver my products across the UK. Two, create agriculture campaigns that promotes crop diversity, limiting food wastage and supporting farmers. This is incredibly important to tackling the lack of food diversity in the UK and ensuring we as small businesses can buy these food sources at stable prices. Three, I am aiming to use 70% surplus foods in our products to prevent food wastage. So our wider benefits include creating easier access to nourishing foods. This is great because low gut health can cause illnesses such as headaches, mood disorders and constipation, encouraging employee sick days. This can affect businesses' profit and their ability to contribute to economic growth. Also, our smoothie cubes tackle global food waste as we include surplus foods and due to them being stored in the freezer it promotes a longer shelf life for both us and consumers. Winning this award would be a massive milestone towards achieving my purpose in life. Also, as someone who has a lot of foster siblings and works with the youth, it would give me the opportunity to be a very proud role model to them and practice what I preach. Test trials show that people already want it in its pre-launch phase. Currently, I've also completed my gut brain diploma, my level three food and hygiene certificate, approval from the council to work for my kitchen. Hence, I'm asking for this award to fill in the missing finances and the support so that I can immediately begin preparing to bring my products to the market within this 12 month program. Also, I want to start immediately tackling the challenges of the food industry and start living and creating a cleaner society. My name is Letitia, the CEO of Fruitech. Feel good all over and thank you so much for listening. <laughs> Makes me so happy every time I listen to, to, to this video. Um, Letitia, welcome. How are you doing? And tell us a little bit about what you're doing and what you've been up to since the video. Yes, well, for one, uh, watching it back is definitely like, oh, wow, that is a lot of energy. <laughs> Three minutes is a very short time, y'all. You'll know when you film it. <laughs> I, I won't go into too much detail about what I do, but as you know, it was all centered around creating blender free smoothies that essentially help busy people to improve or maintain their digestive health. In terms of how this award has helped, I would definitely say it's given me the time to really flesh out this idea because I feel like I had it and in my mind I could visualize how it would work. But in reality, I was like, oh my gosh, there's actually a lot of steps to this. Even just filling out the application form, it really made me think, right, okay, what are the risk assessments? What are the challenges? How am I actually going to make this work? So I guess with the support of a mentor, it, I've really just like mapped it out and I've really seen, right, okay, this is all the different roadblocks that could occur or are occurring. 
i.e. one of my biggest challenges, and it's still my challenge, is around this whole frozen production and how am I delivering it to people dry ice insulated packaging and how am I preserving the nutrients and stuff like that from the offset. Um, it's definitely a challenge, but I would say like through um, Innovate UK having such close connection as well as other programs such as the Innovate uh, Women's program, I've managed to meet someone who at whose background actually is in the frozen industry. Like she's had, she spent a bit of time. So now because of that, I'm now having uh, meetings with her every once in a while to, to help that get going. I feel like what it's also allowed me to do, because it's only for one year, I feel like that's also really, really nice. Because then it's like, right, what tangible, what do you consider as tangible um, success? What can you say by the end of this year, I would have completed? And for me, I'm like, right, okay, if this whole frozen idea, I've still got it in mind, I still think it's great. But if it's going to take me this long and if I'm going to have to do a partner with now like universities to like get that clarified and just really make sure I'm giving consumers the best possible nutrients I can, what can I do in the here and now? So now what I'm actually working on is I've got a few nearly completed um, gut health programs, gut health webinars. So it's about building that community and just teaching busy people how to have amazing digestive health in super easy ways. Um, and I'm also, what else am I doing? I'm also creating ready to drink versions of it. So I was like, right, okay, if the barrier is this whole frozen concept, right, it's still quite gold in terms of the concept itself. Like I really had to narrow down what is my why, what is the whole purpose of this and just simplify everything. And I've got to say like people like me here, he'll be he'll probably be smiling right now. Yeah, he's literally like nudged me. One of, another benefit is having peers and friends and they're like, I'm tired of hearing that your idea is not progressing. That is not good enough Letitia <laughs> tell me something new so yeah so each week honestly we have like our little check-ins in the morning 7 30 a.m so it's really like nice for me to say like I have to say something so in the back of my head I'm like constantly saying that I've got to say something so because of that like I've had to pivot and it's nothing wrong with pivoting it's still along the same kind of line and like I said even even now, that whole idea of getting that perfect product market fit, really understanding what exactly is it that your customers need and what exactly, what solution based of that can you have? I realized actually it wasn't the frozen thing. They, they're busy, they're on the go, actually just want to carry around something and actually ensure that it's just improving the health that way. So for me, I was like, right, okay, actually, this is potentially an even better, even better solution potentially. But of course, in terms of innovation life, Blender Free is, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Amazing. There's so much, so much in what you've said that could be like separate questions and we could branch out so much. I think one thing that you highlighted very accurately is that piece around the problem and being really clear on what is the problem and then what does the audience, what do the customers want? And sometimes that means that our great solution that we came up in the shower may not be the perfect solution. And so it's not being too attached to the solution, but very, being very committed to the problem and to figuring out, figuring out how to solve for that. So yeah, that's really brilliant. Thank you. And uh, your video also stood out uh, to the, the panel, I remember, uh, and, and because of that you know that energy that genuineness and also covering all of these different points you had a slightly different order where you talked about the role modeling halfway through but you did cover it all and and that commitment and that energy really just came through the screen and everyone was like wow like there's so much there like let's uh you know let's let's make that happen uh we have a, a third um video um unfortunately anna is, has not been able to join us but i think it's worth watching her video just so you get a, a third uh, idea as well just uh, just so we have a, another different perspective so jess if we can play um anna's video Thank you. This is me, and this is Uncommon Alchemy. It's all about transformation and experimentation. Most of the time, I feel like a mad scientist, and I love that feeling. I'll admit, not all of my experiments go to plan, but some do, and either way, I love it. Uncommon Alchemy came about because I was trying to find a way to recreate delicately pleated textiles in a material that was more durable. Seeing sustainability as non-negotiable led me to learning about and falling in love with biomaterials, and I've had so much fun since then. The textile origins of the idea are still present as the basis of the moulds I use to pour my seaweed biomaterial into, 
giving the products their signature rippled texture. There is a growing demand for sustainable solutions in consumer products, especially vegan options. My Seaweed Biomaterial provides a real alternative to leather and plastic. And while biomaterials are being explored in design circles, hardly anything is actually available for ordinary people to buy. That's what I'm interested in. Making biomaterials accessible, understandable and desirable to real consumers. So far, I've created hundreds of biomaterial samples. I've developed and perfected the seaweed recipe, as well as the pouring and moulding processes. And I've created a drying system, which will allow me to scale up production. I've sourced materials, produced prototypes, and begun work on branding and marketing strategies. While developing the seaweed, I've also been working on a second innovative material, and have begun building relationships with woolen mills to source from their waste streams. In five to 10 years, I'd love to have developed a much wider range of products and materials, and maybe even have physical stores for the brand. I want to be instrumental in encouraging uptake of sustainable materials in everyday products, and I'd love to make a difference by educating and engaging people about the amazing materials that can be made by marrying together nature, science, and craft. Receiving a Young Innovators Award would make an enormous difference to me. I'll be graduating from my fashion brand marketing degree in May, and I'm going to be using every one of my final year projects to develop Uncommon Alchemy, as well as working directly on it two days a week. But I know that transitioning to working on the business full time after uni will be difficult and isolating. Young Innovators would help provide structure, support, and financial help to make that transition a successful one and help my business take off. I've not had a straightforward path to where I am. For the last 15 years, I have struggled with poor health and had a lot of disruption to my education. What I'd love to do as a role model is share the hard-won knowledge with other aspiring entrepreneurs, that despite setbacks, what really matters is finding something you love and believe in. Your journey to get there doesn't have to be linear. And most importantly, it does not have to look like everyone else's journey. This is my journey. It's mad science, it's material magic, it's curiosity and wonder every day. Please consider me for a Young Innovators Award and join me on this journey of discovery. Great, thanks so much. I think it was uh, quite good, um, you know, to, to see the free because they're completely different as well. So you can really see how different people with different ideas have approached the, the video um, differently. And Anna is actually a young innovator from um, not this current cohort, but the previous one. And she's gone on to uh, win the Young Innovator of the Year uh, award, as well as then uh, the Young Innovator Next Step, which was the follow-on funding that was provided uh, for, for the previous cohort. So she's been really, really successful and she's completely pivoted. Uh, so it will echo both of the things that you've heard before. She's completely pivoted her idea um, to really strengthen the product and uh, make something that can be developed on a much more industrial scale rather than uh, the small kind of bespoke approach. So, and that was through um, talking to her innovation champion. And I think what's really strong in her video and her videos, because she's obviously done one for each application, is that she's always talking also about the challenges that she's facing. So it's not all like, oh, look at me and there's this big market and this all the stuff, which, you know, that part is also very important. But there's the realism in there. There's like honesty in there that you can sense, you know, these are the challenges and this is what I need help with. So just something to reflect on, because I think sometimes we tend to think we need to have this perfect slick video. Um, but if, if we have it all perfect and slick, then there's going to be a question from the assessors and from the panelists to say, well, do you need the Young Innovator Award? You know, if you're all the way there already, right? Um, so I think that was quite important to show that. Um, so let's come back to me here and Leticia. And by the way, if there are any questions, uh, feel free to pop them in the chat. We're now just going to have an informal kind of Q&A session. So to get us started, I wanted to ask both of you, um, how did you approach the, the content of the video? What did you decide what you're going to talk about? Um, I guess I'm going. Um, so for me, one of the things, uh, so, I mean, I, I started with uh, the, uh, the application itself, right? I, I wanted to make sure that I covered the questions that were being asked from question, is it 19, Salen? Uh, yeah, so question 19. Um, and also at the same time, not like summarizing, but not repeating what I was saying in the other parts of the application. Uh, so 
for me, that process started by, you know, just writing out a script. I tend to, that's, that really helps my brain flow. So just writing stuff out and placing stuff. I think I must have written a, and rewritten my script three to four times um, before I came upon a version that looked like this. And then as I started recording, it changed again. Um, but the content was primarily driven by something that Selene, Leticia, and Anna have already touched on, which is focus on the problem or the problems. Uh, you know, that's, that's what for me was the heart of it. Um, trying to ensure that I'm communicating this across to someone that it, who may or may not have any idea of what I'm talking about and keeping it as simple as possible. Um, if you go back to my video, you'll see that I think my solution is maybe 30 seconds out of a three minute video. Um, there is a lot more that uh, that's going on. How did I identify the problem and how does this program actually help me? Uh, what are some of the challenges I'm facing? What do I want to gain and also give back to this program? And so these were all the thoughts that were going through my head as I was developing that script. What about you, Leticia? Oh, well, for me, I would definitely say I, I'm, I'm quite trial and error if I'm being 100% honest with you. So I say that in the sense that like the following year, I actually applied for Innovate UK and I didn't get it. But one thing that is really good about Innovate UK is that it doesn't matter whether you get it or not, they give you so much feedback. So, and I didn't initially have the blender free idea. I just went with my normal gut health drinks at the time. But like, I feel like through reading that, I realized the areas where I could have strengthened and I really looked into what was the scores where I got where I got scored just lower. That's my right, okay, let's let's have a reflection. And right before that, I applied for Innovate, before I applied for Innovate UK, sorry, I actually applied for another really big um, global award, which was for 25K, and I also didn't get that. So I feel like the feedback, like I kept just like looking into it, like every time I didn't get something, why didn't I get it? Where could I have improved? So I took all those learnings and I applied it to this application form. And then when I finished writing it out, I then actually went to, um, I went to Hatch Enterprise. They run something called one-to-one -one skilled volunteering sessions. And it's essentially just getting a mentor, someone who's off the field, just look over my application form because it's all well and good me getting friends and family, but they're not going to clock into certain things. Like, have you really clearly defined your problem? Have you really in one sentence to, in regards to like writing in, I think it's saying uh, like a five-year-old or something like that. Have you really explained it that super duper clearly that anyone, regardless of their background, can get it? your USP? What exactly makes you different from your competitors? Is that truly a USP or is that just another value that you're offering? Like what, what actually is unique about you? Because there are at the end of the day, it gets to a point where it's like there are so many amazing ideas out there. Sorry, unique selling proposition. There's so many amazing ideas out there that it comes down to who has really made them like really, really made themselves distinct from the market. And being distinct does not mean necessarily coming up with the biggest brand new idea ever that no it doesn't necessarily mean that but it does mean really describing making it clear what value you are offering that's just that slightly bit How, are you filling that gap another thing that I, that I identified as well was and that I really honed into is what gap am I filling in and I feel like for me that's what's really got me through the doors in regards to how I actually wrote it, I just, I definitely started with the application form first. And like I said, I'm a bit trial and error. My thoughts go everywhere. I'm a bit creative like that. So I just write it and write it and I keep going. And then eventually like I re-jig it a bit. I don't recommend this method. I re-jig it, then I cut down and then we go like that. We just keep refining and refining and refining. I did quite a few drafts. I'm, I'm not gonna lie about that for every single section. <laughs> And then finally, like the easiest bit for me was the video because it's just a quick little talk and, you know, bam, bam, boom. It's fascinating that, right? Different parts will come easy for, for different people. Um, and for some people, the video is really nerve wracking. 
um, because having you know to talk to camera if you're not used to it and then re-watching it can be uh, can be quite challenging um, and I think the technical elements sometimes put puts people off as well and I've seen in the chat someone was asking you know do you shoot everything in one go or do you then go back and edit and and cut and paste it uh, we've obviously seen free videos and they've all been different so as you can see uh, there's no you know one way to do it it's it's all about you and how and what's going to carry your message in the best way but i'd love to hear from leticia me here you know how did you approach that technical element that some people might think a bit daunting um but some people won't right because they're like on tiktok all the time but <laughs> no, guys the secret is just add enthusiasm to it. I am not a tech person. I do not have these media and Anna skills. <laughs> like all I know is my basic smartphone. Just turn the camera, angle it right. Try and put your head a bit more down so you're not looking up the nose like my one did. I learned <laughs> watching it back. And yeah, just keep talking. I think the main point in that is it's more about the structure and making sure that you fit within the three minutes and deciding which segments you want to spend like time on and really like honing through it and which bits you're gonna think. Cause at the end of the day, they already know like all the nuts, the core details about your about your idea. They already know that. So what they're really looking for is does this person have personality? Are they committed? Do they show drive? Are they, um, how much do they care about other people and like role modeling and how much impact are they going to have on perhaps the cohort as well? Like, who are they? It's about resonating. Where is that like human side of them? So I feel like that's something you've got to really take into consideration of the video. The video is just an extra. So whether you slap a load of like 20 different times to get this point, like they, I really doubt they're going to mind. Just get the message across in a genuine, enthusiastic, clear cool way me here <laughs> uh yeah so i think for me i uh, i used a smartphone as well uh as you could probably hear there were i was shooting it on the side of a road there were cars coming across uh that you can hear through um and because i was i for me it was an intentional choice to use that background mostly because I wanted to drive home the point that, you know, ICUs are not, there are multiple ways to tackle the problem of ventilation, especially when we were in the context of the pandemic, even now. Uh, but uh, that's why I chose that. But I, tr I tried to do it in a way that, you know, it's a static background. It's not going to distract from myself. Um, and when I want, then I can point to it. Um, Similar to Leticia, I also uh, applied two years ago, did not get in, got feedback. And so I think, you know, that, and two years ago, I tried a lot. I, I mean, like my video was very different from this. Um, it was still shot on, on, on the phone, but there was a little bit more technical aspect to it, which, you know, I, I decided to remove all of that in instead and went for a much simpler background. Um, the In terms of the slides and stuff, again, I chose to do that because I felt that the topic I was talking about would be better explained using pictures to represent something like that. Um, and I think that's very much of an individual choice. Uh, I don't think there is, as, as you've seen, there is no right or wrong answer. It's what try what is the best way that you can get your point across um, while keeping it again. The core thing is keeping it simple. Um, so again, if you saw my slides, it was not complex. It was three numbers, a GIF, a video, and that's it. Uh, just trying to be like, hey, this is what I've done, uh, and just adding to what I have already, what I'm saying in the video, and. Yeah, I think um, yeah, those. I think from the technical side, that's that. Those would be my recommendations. And Brilliant. We have a specific question about what software did you use when yeah. making your videos from Ralph? Any comments on that? I mean, you both said the phone, um, but what did you use after that? Premiere Pro. 
I just find it easier to edit on it. Mm. Uh, I I used a free video editing software. Well, hold on one sec. iMovie, yeah, iMovie. Um, but you know there are there are a bunch of free ones. So it's not difficult. It's not inaccessible, basically. Just and that's something that I just learned how to use over the last couple of years. So um, yeah, if you have a Mac, iMovies is indeed very easy. To, yeah, but even Windows has a few options that are as good as yeah. sometimes even better than iMovie in terms of how simple and free it is. Yeah. It's changed a lot. I remember making videos, you know, six, seven years ago. It yeah. was not so easy. No. <laughs> um, no. We have a question from Sylvia um, around um, the video pitch. So should I take it as supplementary of the written application? or as um, an individual application, i.e. should I repeat the written part in the video? And Jay already provided some answer in terms of, you know, the video should stand alone. Um, and this point, you know, I think it's important to just mention uh, that so there are two um, stages in the assessment process. And the first part is an, uh, several assessors will review all of your application, all of the questions and the video and everything, and give you the score. And that's the feedback that you'll then receive, which is what both Leticia and me here referred to in terms of whether you're successful or not, you do receive that, that feedback. Um, and then the, the top applications are then taken to panel and the panel only watch the video. So the video is really, really important. And so the panelists won't have your full written application. So you do need to give them enough so that they understand your idea where you're at. So literally ticking all of these points that we've gone through at the beginning of the call into the video. Um, because yeah, they that's that's what they'll be focusing on. So hopefully that helps Sylvia and me here, Leticia. Any additional comments on on that question? Um, yeah, I just I when I was approaching the video again as part of my thinking process, I just thought of my video as being very similar to the project summary in terms of you know this is going to be something that it's going to be a lay person they're not having they would not have spent you know half an hour or whatever reading through the nitty gritty of my application uh, so it has to cover the essence of my project as well as who i am but not go into too much detail that that's all it becomes about yeah i would definitely say i feel like in my head i had they're going to have so many different applicants in front of them uh, everything that they've asked me, I need to be able to explain it super duper clearly, like one sentence kind of thing for each point. That is a must say. Like I literally just thought, and for, for my beginning, but I literally thought within the first ten seconds they're gonna know whether they want to continue like mentally watching or not. So like I need to make sure I have a clear hook, and at the end have a clear arc. And I was literally thinking, how can I like, as mine's a product, I was like, right, how can I like visually represent it, visually show it? That was my mindset. People relate like so much more to like pictures than they do to actually like what you're saying. And they relate so much more to like your body language as opposed to what you're saying as well. That is so true. And I might get the percentage percentages wrong, but hopefully I won't. It's 7%. So when you're speaking, uh, public speaking in any form, online, video, in person, 7% is the words that you say, 38% is how you say it, power, pause, tone of voice, um, all of that, and, uh, and passion, that was the one I was looking for, and finally 55% is your body language. And think about on a video, you're literally within, you know, <laughs> Uh, some kind of rectangle or square or something like that so you know how do you convey uh, your passion how do you convey what you're proposing uh, is really really important so that's a really good point uh, Leticia and I, I hope I got the percentages right if anyone was doing the maths uh, <laughs> um, so hopefully that answers your question Rafaela as well um, and then Harris I see that um, Rachel's already come back to you on, on that uh, but you've got your hand up so yes go ahead Harris you've got a question um, yeah, yeah hi guys my name is Harris um, I'm actually a student at um, the University of Nottingham at the moment and I've literally found out about this idea in the past week 
So I've not been able to engage too much. Um, but my question was about eligibility, which is why it was kind of important. I just wanted to get it fully clarified so that I'm only applying if I'm actually eligible for it or not. Um, so it's, it's around my idea. It's uh, I've got a social impact project that I'm currently taking part in, and I'm hoping to develop a lot more over the coming year. Um, it would be an online thing as well. Um, but in terms of the actual setup of it, I haven't fully decided if I want to do it um, as, as like a business because I don't intend to make money from it. That, that's not kind of the aim. Um, but it is some sort of like a, an organization that I'm looking to actually make. Um, whether that's a non-profit or a social enterprise, I'm not too sure. So I was just wondering what's the criteria around that specifically? Like, for example, if it isn't a business, like, is it still, um, should I still bother applying or is it better just to not apply now and wait and see um, what's going on? Um, yes, yeah, so just to quickly answer your question, um, all types of um, structures are eligible for the award. So whether it's social enterprise, charity, you know, business, um, it's all uh, it's all open. Uh, so you're yeah, you're welcome to uh, to apply uh, with with your idea from that point of view. I think it was answered in the chat as well. And also, it's it's only FAQs. So um, I, maybe if Rachel, if you can pop the uh, if you don't mind to pop the link to the frequently asked questions in the chat, then you'll be able to to see it there as well. Um, uh, Sylvia, was that? Oh, is, is, yeah, is that helpful? Did you have any other? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wasn't sure about the charity thing because I'm looking to make like a charity, not a business. So I think that clarifies it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's still eligible, and we've had all sorts of different types of structures um, in in the awardees in the past. So, and Rachel's just popped the frequently asked questions uh, there. So feel free to to check those out, and it will definitely tell you. In uh, I was going to say in black and white, but it's actually in purple and white because that's the color of the website. Um, brilliant. Um, we've got so we've got a couple of questions. Um, Demi, you've got your hand up. Let's go there first. You might be on mute if you're talking. Um, oh, there you because, go. Sorry, someone was trying to call me whilst I was actually about to start voice noting. Do you know what? Yeah, just so that I can concentrate properly, I'll let someone go before me if that's okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, no worries. We'll come Please. back to you in a second. Um, so Sylvia was asking about is uh, our PowerPoint slide helpful? And we hear you've already started answering. Is there is there anything you want to share? Yeah, so again, sort of just uh, iterating, uh, reiterating what we what's been mentioned. It's the PowerPoint slides or any any visual, any visual or anything should just add to who you are and what you are saying. The I think one of the really cool things about the Young Innovator program is that they're not they are investing in the idea and the solution, but they're more investing in you as a person and your ability to identify and solve problems. Um, they're sort of looking to effectively train the next the next generation of innovators, entrepreneurs, and business leaders. So use the slides, but don't rely on them. The don't have the slides take up the full screen to the extent that it makes you look very small or hides who you are, because that really won't be helpful um, in most cases. And there are always exceptions. Uh, so, but that would be my, my advice. Leticia, any, you didn't have any slides, so any, any thoughts on slides? <laughs> I definitely second everything Miha just said. I think he answered that very beautifully. For me personally, I would never have slides just because I'm a product business, so I can easily explain my product by just including it in my like in front of me and actually showing it off because I think that's always really nice but there's some instances like oh, for me has one you can't really show that so he needed to put like a visual picture or I guess you might want to call it a slide kind of thing and like reduce it and put it to the side so you could still see him at the whole time so when he could he just spoke to you normally yeah, thank you both. It's uh, it's always thinking about how does he how, how does it back up your message? How does it illustrate your message? I think that's uh, so that was really really well said. We have a question from um, Zinedine around um, the assessors and panelists uh, whether they 
both have access to the video and the answer is yes. So the assessors will be scoring the video as well as all of the written questions and the panelists will be watching the video um, only. So, so that uh, hopefully answers your, your question there. Demi, I don't know where we, we can come back to you. I don't know if you're able to talk to us at the moment. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can. Um, let me just quickly just um, turn on my camera to you. Um, hi, Ron. Hope you can see me clearly. Hi. Good to see you. Um, hi. Uh, good to see you guys too. Um, thank you for the knowledge and the wisdom that you guys have given. I actually arrived in late, just to let you know, so I didn't capture everything from the beginning. Um, so what I'd like to speak about is in regards to how you guys approached um, your ideas. Someone like me, I'm, I'm basically just going to speak about who I am just a little bit. I'm a poet, artist, but then I also work with a lot of artists in studios. So I feel like I've seen a gap in the market. But then when I've done research, um, I'm thinking, how come no one has done what I'm trying to do? So then I'm looking at it like, is it something where with Airbnb, they faced a lot of um, obstacles to get to where they got to, but in the end, they did actually get to where they got to. So what I'd like to basically ask is through your research um, process, how did you ensure that what your idea was was truly innovative and you bring in your character and your essentially your dream, your vision, your mission to the project? Sorry, I know it's a bit of a big question, but I feel like I just need kind of guidance to just make sure that what I'm basically trying to um, perpetuate, people are making, um, I'm sorry, I'm making people understand why I feel it's important for the entertainment industry, especially musicians, engineers, and so forth. So, yeah. Great question. We've touched on it a little bit. Uh, and by the way, the recording will be shared. So, so anyone who's joined halfway, like you can also go back, which is great. Um, yeah. But maybe we can retouch on some of the things we discussed around focusing on the problem first. Um, here, Leticia, did you want to Stop. I'm not sure I fully understood the question. I didn't quite capture your idea entirely. Oh, okay. But... Okay. Do you know what? Yeah. Let me. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry to talk over you. I hope I didn't. Um. May I, should I say the idea? A bit nervous about it, but. Yeah. Say it to me one more time. Okay. okay so the idea essentially is. So one sec, Demi. Before you go through that, just reminding you that this is recorded. So yeah. be careful about what you are saying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. Is no, no, there... more, more in the sense of like, you know, you want yeah. to be protective. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So in this sense, um, I'll, I'll let you answer and then I have a, I have something I can add. Okay. I think it's quite hard. I feel like, okay, I think my main thing was, would be if I could potentially just speak to anyone, maybe one-to-one -one, um, outside of this session, because I feel like my thoughts are quite, um expansive in regards to what i'm trying to address and me looking at certain companies business models and them being rejected um such as airbnb but then after a while suddenly meeting the right people they found um the best way to bring the value proposition as well as to mitigate risks and so forth whether for, from legally all the way to customer experience to provider experience so providing something that ensures that people are safe so i feel like that's something that i would like just some advice or guidance on but i don't feel like it might be able to be answered right now yeah i'm not too sure Deming, i'm happy for you to talk to me off camera and in regards to your question what i did was one i ensured that there was a clear gap in the market um, yeah two then i came up with potential solutions Three, I started yeah. mapping out who I thought my customer was and what their pain points are and the different like organizations and brands that are solving them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where my one fits into it. Uh, four, I then okay. created like, different questionnaires as well and handing it out to my target audience to test it if they, whether okay. this is what they want. Five, I ran focus groups to ensure okay. to see how like in depth it was um, and check and see how people are feeling yeah um, these focus groups as well helped when i was doing like my mvp my minimal fireable product as well I yeah 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 them, and i went forward and backwards a quite a few times so i feel like that has really helped me get to that phase before being like right let's take a plunge and actually like 
take a risk here and be like right okay. like, um, unorthodox or something that hasn't quite yeah been and then what i've also done as well on top of that is i received different mentorship pre-innovate uk as well like more like one-off sessions to see yeah, how yeah. much try to get it reviewed from people who actually know what they're talking about because yeah. obviously friends and families are nice but you want someone who actually understands has no complete background because when I said my idea a few times to friends they're like oh yeah that's nice but I said mm. it to a mentor who's previously been there done it and stuff like that in my field as well a bit further on but a bit uh, doing something a bit different therefore there's no like conflict of interest and they were yeah. like okay so this is what I heard Sometimes when you say your idea and they say what they've heard and they say back what they really stood out to them, you're like, oh, crap. So that's the hook point. That's what I need to focus on. Obviously, I'm answering this very, very vague. But I, I know what you mean, yeah. More detail. I got you, I got you. Thank you, no, but you've, you've pointed some things out to me because I feel like I need to ensure that when I speak about the idea, the main core idea is um, captured when I actually do speak about it, if that makes sense. Um, thank you for that, Letitia. Thank you. Me here, is you want to add uh, to that? And then mm -hmm. we'll take one final question and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, no, I'm happy. Again, I've put my LinkedIn on there if anyone, if anyone wants to chat offline or wants, uh, I'm happy to have a quick chat. Um, so, uh, yeah, but nothing to add to what Letitia just really, really well said, said really, really well. Yeah, that was a great step-by-step -step guide. Um, really, really good. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Letitia. So yes, and do feel free um, to connect with Letitia and me here um, to, to talk to them about their experience as well. We'll take one uh, final um, one final question. Uh, which I saw earlier on. Um, we'll take just two minutes on that. So one minute each, and then I'll wrap it up um, very briefly um, because I think it's a really good one. It's from Sylvia. It's asking you, how do you feel about becoming a role model? Uh, because it is part of what's asked in the video. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Um. It is scary and amazing and exciting and nerve wracking all at the same time. <laughs> it is such a position of honor to be, you know, considered by other people to be a role model. Um, and I, I think for me, as I mentioned in my video as well, like one of the awesome things has been that like entrepreneurship, innovation in general is really lonely. Even if you have a team around you, as you know ceo cto someone like making decisions it can be very isolating um the last few years have not helped either and so having a group of peers um who i can learn from uh and who we can share ideas with has been a blessing a huge huge blessing um and then and then to have other people just be like hey Mihir, you're doing this cool stuff like can we have chat with you about our ideas? And it, it just blows my mind. Um, and I have nothing else to say. It, it, like there, there are just so many feelings associated with that that is very difficult to put into words. Maybe Letitia can do this, do this better than me. Very funny, me here. <laughs> uh, how does it feel to be a role model? Uh, I feel like because my I work alongside of uh, doing Innovate UK and it's all about supporting entrepreneurs. Um, I feel like it, it's it's a bit of a unique position to be in to be like okay cool I support people with entrepreneurship already but now it's actually about my own idea and actually talking about that as well. That's something that I don't I haven't really connected the two together. I'm only now starting to do that. So it's, yeah, it's a very unique position. It's definitely a very humbling position because sometimes you're like, but what have I actually got to offer anyone? And it's, and they're like, no, 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 I really want to hear it. And then you start talking, you're like, oh crap, I actually know a lot. <laughs> this actually is me. So I feel like I'm like, I'm connecting the two and two together still and just finding more of a format of helping people in the most effective way. I, it's definitely grateful. And honestly, I'm always open to connecting with anyone and if I can't help I'm quite good at connecting you to the right person can not always I can potentially 
connect you with the right people who can actually support as well I think that's also something that I've had to understand is because sometimes we put a lot of pressure on ourselves that I have to know the answer I've got to know it all and that sometimes actually stops us from going for stuff so now I'm like actually I'm going to help you as much as I can and this is everything that I've done here are potential suggestions that you could think of and if these don't quite work why don't you think about this hub or this connection or that person and even like to learn for instance you I, I, I asked for support in regards to frozen stuff and instantly you guys were like right okay cool who do who do I know uh, who can I connect you with who else is in the whole like smoothie business right okay let's get you guys talking and uh, or right okay I know you want to be eco-friendly let's connect you with that person let's see if it's going to at least be a stepping stone towards the right connection because sometimes you've got to be not afraid to put your ideas out there maybe they can't immediately help you but they may be able to just get you to that next step and then that person knows someone who can actually help you you've just got to be open and prepared and for that journey because ultimately they always say it entrepreneurship is a journey to just fall in love with it from now yeah yeah <laughs> So true. And uh, thank you for the question around role modeling. Uh, role modeling is an important part of the program. So we ask everyone uh, who is successful with the award to spend four days within the 12 months to role model. And that can be through lots of different ways. Uh, obviously, me here and Leticia have talks about, you know, mentoring and supporting other people along their journey. Uh, you can also be like speaking to schools uh, with, with children, where you can be uh, doing sessions at, at museums and libraries you can uh, work for with charities I mean there's so many different ways that you can do that um, and I think no matter what you do uh, is what they've both covered in terms of the fulfillment that you get from someone succeeding and realizing that perhaps you had a small part to play in that success and I think that is so much more rewarding than anything that you could do yourself and that might just be me but uh, I just wanted to to share that with with all of you we will wrap up now I'm aware that we're a couple of minutes um, over but I just finish with um, three quick tips for you to remember from this session the first one is content is key focus on what you say and how you say it um, and make sure that you cover all the points in the question that's really really important the second is link 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 do not leave that question without the link in it. It's happened before. Do not forget your password in there if you have one and make sure that you use YouTube. And finally, I think you got this from this conversation and from seeing the videos that we've shown you. Be you, show us who you are. Tell us how you're gonna benefit from the program. Tell us how you're gonna give back to your community and doing it, doing all of that in your own authentic style. You've seen the free videos, the free people, you've met two of them are completely different. Their ideas are different, their personalities are different and that's what's shining through in each of their videos. Um, so thank you so much uh, for joining us. It's been really lovely to spend the hour with all of you and we hope you found it super useful. If you have any questions, there's the frequently asked questions page. That's your first stop. You can do control F and look for keywords because there's lots of content in there. Um, and if you have more questions beyond that, uh, you can also contact the Innovate UK customer service team. There's the email address and the phone number here. We will be sharing the recording and the slides with you later on. Uh, thank you again for joining and thank you Mihir, Leticia so much uh, for spending the time with us and helping many future applicants. We really appreciate it. Thank Bye, you everyone. for having us. Thank Bye you. and best of luck. Bye everyone.